Let's take a look at conductivity. Remember, for conductivity, free-moving ions or free-moving charged particles must be present. So what type of substances conduct an electrical current? Solid metals have freely moving electrons and tend to be able to conduct an electrical current readily due to these free moving electrons. Some molten substances and some solutions also conduct an electrical current. These types of substances all conduct electrical currents. Molten ionic substances, water solutions of ionic substances, and acidic and basic solutions. Electrolytes is the name given to materials which conduct an electrical current when molten or in water solution. Non-electrolytes do not conduct an electrical current even when molten or in water solution. Strong electrolytes conduct electricity well. That means they have a lot of ions. This would be soluble ionics and strong acids. Also, strong bases belong on this list. Weak electrolytes do conduct a current, but not well. Weak electrolytes do form ions, but not completely, so at any time only a few ions are present. This would be weak acids or bases, or barely soluble ionic compounds. Non-electrolytes don't conduct an electrical current at all. When they make a solution, they have no ions present in the solution. This would be water-soluble molecular compounds, because most molecular substances are non-electrolytes. They remain whole molecules when dissolved in water. Remember that acids and some bases are exceptions to this, and they do form ions when dissolved in water. One way to do a conductivity test is to use a light or a voltmeter and an open circuit. If you put a conductor between the open circuit, the bulb will light or the voltmeter will show current flow. If it's lit dimly, you're dealing with a weak electrolyte, a poor conductor with few ions. If it's lit brightly, you're dealing with a strong electrolyte, a good conductor, many ions. This assumes that you have roughly equivalent concentrations in all cases. If there's a non-conductor put between the open circuit, the bulb will simply not light. That indicates that no ions are present. On the left, we have a material which could allow for electricity flow, but since the bulb is not lit, we know that the substance is a non-conductor or a non-electrolyte. Here's an example of a very brightly lit bulb with a substance between. Whatever is in here is a strong conductor, a strong electrolyte. And the last image shows a lit bulb, but very dimly. So whatever's between the two electrodes here does conduct, but only weakly, a weak electrolyte. Let's take a look at some specific substances. Let's talk a little bit about water. Does water conduct electricity? First, I'd like to point out that pure water is not the same as tap water. Pure water contains only H2O molecules. Tap water is actually a solution with water as the solvent and many dissolved ions present. Sodium ions, chloride ions, iron ions, so let's take a look at the conductivity of pure water versus the conductivity of some tap water. Now let's look at some other substances. How about the conductivity of table salt? Table salt as a solid, no free moving ions, Table salt molten, in other words, pure table salt heated so hot that the ionic substance finally melted. What about the conductivity of table salt dissolved in water? NaCl AQ. When ionic substances like table salt dissolve in water, they dissociate into their ions.
look at the conductivity of table sugar, sucrose. As a solid, it's a molecular compound, no free moving ions. As a liquid, this means someone took table sugar and got it hot enough so that it melted. If you look closely at the video, you'll notice it's also beginning to decompose with heat, but it is molten sugar, not dissolved in water, but molten sugar melts as molecules. Table sugar in water, table sugar AQ, it does dissolve because it's a polar substance and water is polar. But when it dissolves, it dissolves as intact molecules. What about acids? Acids are kind of a special case, really as our basis too. Hydrochloric acid, HClAq. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, so that means that when hydrochloric acid molecules are put into water, 100% of them form ions. We get many ions, we should see a strong electrolyte, good conductivity. What about acetic acid? It's also an acid. It will make ions in water solution, but it's a weak acid, a carbon-containing acid. So that means that large number of the molecules remain intact and don't form ions. So at any given time, in an acetic acid solution, there will only be a few ions. So compared to an equal concentration hydrochloric acid solution, we'll see a weak electrolyte with only poor conductivity. You'd see the same relationship if you compared a strong base and a weak base. Strong bases form 100% ions and tend to conduct the current well. Weak bases form only a few ions and tend to conduct the current poorly. So what does conductivity help us see? It helps us understand when there are free moving ions present. What types of substances conduct an electrical current? Most metals, even as solids, Ionic compounds, when molten or in water solution. Acids, which are unusual molecular compounds, which form ions when in water solution. And bases, which are either ionic compounds or unusual molecular compounds, which form ions in water solution. What else can a conductivity test reveal? If concentration is controlled, a comparative conductivity test can indicate whether the substances are strong or weak electrolytes. At the same concentration, weak acids and weak bases conduct, but poorly, strong acids and strong bases conduct well.